Hi, I'm Jamie with Chag Tutors. Today I want to talk to you about plasticity, irreversible deformation of a material. This is a really common thing in everyday life. For example, you stretch a rubber band, you let it go, the stress is removed, but there's still a little bit of stretch in the material. It's not exactly the same as it was before. You see this in clay where you can actually mold the, mold the clay and it will remember the stress that was that you applied to it. Or we see this in a bad way in, say, structural steel or something where the material can actually fail or not perform its intended purpose because of plastic deformation. Let's take a look at what plasticity looks like on a stress-strain curve. So over here, here we see the elastic region. In this region, the response of the strain, the material, to the stress, the force applied over an area, is linear. A stress is applied, the strain responds, and crucially, when you remove the stress, the material goes back exactly to what it was before. Now, this is an idealized version of a stress-strain curve. Normally, you will see a little bit of deformation, even if the material is perfectly in the linear elastic region. When you, when you are here, though, in the at the beginning of the plastic region, this is the region where elastic yield happens. Beyond this region, the material won't return to its original state. It's in the plastic region. As we can see, the stress-strain curve is a lot, uh, has a lot lower slope in this region. So as we get higher and higher, especially in this flat region, no matter how, if you barely apply any more stress, the strain is happening, the strain is still happening very quickly. So you apply a little tiny bit more stress and the strain responds by flattening out quite a bit. Um, you might see this in clay molding or if you warm up a thing of silly putty um, or um, any kind of material that you're using to sculpt. Now, this can be a good thing or a bad thing. If you're sculpting and you want to break apart a material into two blobs, it's great that there's fracture over here. So it's not that plasticity or irreversible deformation is a bad thing. It just depends on the application. For example, one thing that happens when you have um, a very ductile material, something that can be drawn out like a metal for a wire, um, is that there's residual stress or what we call work hardening or strain hardening. So over here we have a metal material say that has a crack in it and normally if there's a crack the way the crack is going to propagate and really make the material fail is that there's going to be tensile stress outward facing arrows here on the crack that's going to cause the crack to propagate through the material. Now if there's residual stress and that residual stress is compressive, meaning that it's pushing in on the crack, then that residual stress is a good thing. It's going to prevent that crack from being propagated. It can be a bad thing, though, or an, especially if it's uncontrolled. If you don't intend for there to be plastic, plastic deformation or residual stress, you don't, want, you don't want the results. Here you might see something in a bandsaw where it got too hot, the blade got too hot, and there was plastic deformation such that a little part of it peeled off the main structure of the metal. Now, like we said, even ductile materials will undergo plastic deformation, even though we think of them as things that can be drawn out sort of indefinitely. Um, again, this can be good or bad. And the reason for it is strain hardening, once again, which is basically when the crystal structure of the metal is has dislocations in it. Sometimes this forms a new lattice where the metal is still in a lattice. The metal is still in a crystal shape, but it's a new crystal shape, and there are little holes in that crystal shape. That tends to make a material more brittle, which again can be a good thing or a bad thing. It depends on your perspective. This has been a little bit about plasticity and how we measure it in terms of, you know, the costs and benefits in machine design. More later, and thanks for watching.